Welcome to the Monday, November 1st, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson. Sure Eric Gilbertson. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Benjamin Cheney. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Okay, at this time we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, we're gonna keep this pretty brief because we don't have any members of the public signed on right now, but just in case somebody watching via Orca wants to sign in. Uh, here we go. All right, so for those of you watching at home on Orca, if you decide you wanna sign into tonight's design review committee meeting, you can do so using this link here. Um, and you can also call in at this phone number and use this meeting ID to um, log into the meeting. If anyone is having problems, you can use this email and email me and I will do my best to help you log in. Um, and then of course, if for some reason somebody can't log into the meeting, a member of the public will have to continue the meeting to a time and place certain. Um, for if anybody does sign into the meeting, who's on ORCA right now, but wants to participate, um, when you get on, um, once I've checked, uh, you know, in a, when there's a pause, I'll check in with you, um, and get your name and address, and then, um, we'll, uh, let you speak when it's time for public comments. All right, I'm just going to stop that right now because everybody else is here in person. Oh, reminder to members to mute yourselves when you're not actually talking so we reduce background noise. All right, there you go, Steve. Okay, at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I will second. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. Martha. Liz. Okay, we'll go forward to the first application for 70 Main Street continued. Come up to the table and describe the changes to the application. And a quick reminder to everybody here in person to make sure you're spot speaking really close to the microphone. I move it. Is that that's fine? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay, so the changes are that we took out the center mullion um, and reduced the frames to four. Um, in this photo, the mullions are white because it's just a stock catalog photo. They didn't have uh, enough time to actually draw up what it would normally look like. But these white parts will be black, and that is not frosted glass. It would just be regular black glass like you see on Positive Pi or any of the other places that have recently installed windows. So I think that that will reduce the overall look that when you're driving by from the street, it'll just look like a black window in general. Um, and those are the changes we made. Oh, and also the, um, the mullions are in fact insulated. So there won't be any interior frosting. That was a concern last time. Oh, good. Now yep. the thermal break is a very, yep, very this. nice feature. Mm -hmm. And it goes along with the insulated glass to yep. give you a good insulating property. Yep. Do any members have any questions, comments about the difference in the appearance? Oh, make sure you're talking into the microphone. Uh, are this going to be a flat black that you painted or a shiny black? The mullions themselves? Yeah. I believe they'll be shiny because that way they'll blend in with the windows a little okay. better, but we were open to suggestions. Steve's our painted expert. <laughs> These are paint the, oh. the the mullions are small enough that whether they're a glossy or a semi-gloss or a satin, I mean that I think that 
they're small enough that I don't think that will be an issue. Great. And we, we've ordered them before and they come through a satin, which is a soft color. Mm -hmm. um, and they look, they look very, very nice. So we can give you the option for whatever, you know, gloss, semi-gloss or satin uh, finish on them. Great, thank and you. And if you've got samples to look at before, you, you know, you give them the go ahead to make it, mm -hmm. uh, that'll give you a good idea of just holding them up outside, maybe in the sun, right. to give you an idea of which one you prefer in terms of the appearance, because you want it to be subtle. You want it yes. to look really nice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the glass is going to be tinted? Uh, no, it'll be um, glass. Square. Yeah, but but because it's so dark in there that when they're closed, it'll probably look black. Um, I I st this is Martha. I still have a great deal of problems with the fact that this window is so much bigger than the existing window. Um, I recognize that back in forty years ago that there was a large window, but I just think that it changes the look of one of our primary buildings so significantly that I just can't see it. Are there any pictures of the building when it was first built? Um, not when it was first built, but there is a picture I submitted last week with yes. Mark and the dogs with the windows going top to bottom. Yes. What was the date of that? Do you know? Uh, I would guess it was 1980-ish. Uh-huh. I, I think it's probably, those windows have been the way they are since I moved here in 76. Okay, so maybe 1976. <laughs> I, I was two years old, so I don't really know, <laughs> but <laughs> I was guessing by the hairstyles. <laughs> Do we imagine that the bottom of the garage door windows would be roughly at the same elevation as the bottom of the windows for the Mad Taco? Yes. We're, we're hoping to use the original footprint. And since the Mad Taco is sort of part of the building, I'm, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually wouldn't be too, too surprised to find that the original window is still there. Probably is in the framing. If you look at the photo of the window, the one with the dogs in it, if you can count four boards on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the proposed you can windows, count four boards. There are four boards on the bottom. So you're probably pretty darn close to what the original. Well, what when the, you disassemble it, you will find yes what the original framing is. And then keeping the, the original cell height would be important. And mm -hmm. yes, your contractor should be able to do that. Right. And um, I believe that when we made this proposal initially, that was forefront of our minds is to keep the original footprint. We like history too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys do a good job with it. Thank you. Well, I, I have a, I understand why you want to do this and everything, but I still have a problem with, you know, the garage door windows uh, uh, on, on, certainly on some buildings, not on everyone, but on some buildings. Sure. Um, Last time we were here, you mentioned that if we could come up with reasons why it would be impossible to do it another way, we should let you know. So I want to let you know about the sliding window idea. We don't have the width in the building to do it. Um, we'd have to go into the Mad Taco and the sewing shop in order to have anything slide. And as far as double hung windows, um, for the size we'd like, I won't be able to open them because they'll be too heavy. Um, and I think that a double hung window of that size would be kind of um, unheard of, really. So that's why that's why we're going this route. It's not because we necessarily want to put a garage on Main Street. We're trying to do everything in our power to make it look like a window, but that's just how we can open them based on the space that we have. Yeah. Did you did you look at um, two double hung windows, you know, side by side? I think that that would actually look less like the historic footprint of the building than what we're doing now, because if we're asked to have fewer mullions, that seems like it's a lot more frames. Well, it's just a more of a traditional window. Oh, you're absolutely right, but not really for a storefront. Uh, yeah, but okay. I, mean, I think it's a little more, it's more in keeping, in my opinion, than a garage window. Okay, but, fair yeah. enough. 
I can't argue with that. Do you have a a quote for how much the garage doors are not necessarily installed, but just to buy them? I think it was in the first packet. If I'm not mistaken. I see the word quote on the page. A, I want to say four. <laughs> cost, cost estimate of forty-seven hundred dollars, and the uh, on the left-hand side, about two-thirds of the way down the page, on the base, on the application base page here. Yeah. Oh. It shows down construction cost estimator forty-seven hundred. The reason I ask is, my idea is certainly more expensive <laughs> right <laughs> uh, but like a, a large custom window uh -huh. that levered up and also sort of created like an awning space that would be beautiful um, <laughs> unfortunately i don't necessarily make the decisions i, I thought french stores would be lovely as well but i had a little shot down on that so right. um yeah. yeah no i i hear what you're saying and i i do love that it's very new orleans um that's kind of where i was headed right yeah there. i know right we're all headed yes. to new orleans this time of year um yeah um i could bring it back to my folks and see what they say but sure. i have a but feeling it, it would be like three times as much money about it would be a cost increase yep sure been a rough year too can i just throw that out there <laughs> <laughs> now your idea of the french door would be the doors that open in. right but then they'd swing out and hit the other businesses one of ours so that wouldn't be a big deal but it would get in the way of the sidewalk and stuff yeah this way this would be all self-contained um yeah Any other comments, suggestions, questions? Make sure you get a microphone so Liz and Martha can hear you. Martha and Liz, do you have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? No, no not really. Um, yeah, I think I'm just more in favor of a double hung window uh, idea than the garage door on Main Street. I don't have anything other than what I've said. Based on the application for the, just, just to get a read on everybody's feelings about it, based on the overhead door with the four narrow but wide panels, what are, what are your thoughts on, in terms of, before I go through the criteria, of your feelings about approval or, or not? Um, I'll go first. I'm a no. This is Martha. I, I guess the way I think about this, this is a really typical bar window configuration. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with some bars in Wisconsin that, where I grew up that are this way, but, uh, and this is not the original window as well. Uh, and uh, I think I will probably vote to approve it based on the fact that this is not an original window and that this actually reestablishes the opening. I don't, I don't like it, but I don't see any alternative for it either. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I'm inclined to approve it. Um, I prefer the original application over the uh, over this, partially to Liz's sort of double hung. I feel like it creates a little bit more structure that sort of feels a little feels more in keeping with that building to me than the long kind of really narrow rectangles um but i realized there was some work done prior to me coming here to 
have that opinion, so I'm willing to defer. But it's a shame we don't have a picture of the in the 1800s, yeah. what the window might have looked like. That would have been a very expensive picture to take. <laughs> <laughs> the time machine. <laughs> so, is... The one with the dogs is a pretty standard configuration. I doubt if the uh, facing on the below the windows is original, but that's hard to tell. Uh, did you explore the idea we talked a little bit last time about uh, just four panes? About the, the bigger panes. B just a, a, a cross, so you have four, four panes of... Right, I think they needed to have enough to bend, and the four panes wouldn't bend enough. And they need to be small enough for each it to bend between yeah. each pane to go up. Would it help anybody if I did a quick share of a broader picture of the building so that you can see the windows on either side of Charlio's? Sure. And I have a question for Martha and Liz, whether if this was a scenario where it was a window, like I'm describing, that was hinged at the top that opened to become an awning but was one kind of big plate glass whether that would change your feelings about it at all oh, oh sorry hold on tried to move something in it maybe they couldn't hear me yeah no i could hear you um i don't know if that would change my opinion um but i mean i do see i don't think the, the big windows that you know if you're restoring those openings the big openings they probably weren't the original openings probably there were double hung windows there maybe the whole configuration of doors and windows were different, was different originally. Um, but I mean, I do like the idea of restoring the original openings um, because they are, I mean, not, not original, but the hist historic opening, um, probably from, you know, the 18th century. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, my, my first preference would be to have a double hung or maybe uh, two, two, you know, four panes, but you could have the one side be a slider so you could open at least half of that space by sliding half of the window over next to the other half. Um, that to me would be preferable, I think, because you would only have four panes of glass then. But, um, you know, if that's, that's my opinion. Pictures helpful, Meredith. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, and um, I, I could more be more satisfied with Ben's idea of an of an awning that opens on the top. Um, I see what you mean. This with this picture, this does help, Meredith. Um, I see what you mean about making the window bigger, but I still have a problem with the garage door look. <laughs> Well, uh, Liz, maybe you can help out on this. My guess is that sure you this uh, building did not have big windows to begin with. Right. That's my uh, guess, too. And a fairly common storefront is the, that's why I kind of picked on the, uh, you know, they're fairly large panes, but four panes on a storefront. Right, right. It's a fairly common uh, and that that's what the look is, I think, at um, positive pie. <laughs> Their new windows are like four large panes, but they're sliders, I believe. Yeah. So so are the ones at Julio's. They're sliders also. Oh, okay. Yeah, positive, uh, or sorry, um, the positive pie, I think, are big double hungs, I think, and then Julio's was ones that slid sideways. Oh, okay. So it was like three panes where two of them slid behind the third one for, mm -hmm. for Julio's. I see. But the good thing about restoring the opening is that Somebody may decide in the future that this is not a great idea and just put big picture windows back in again. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think that's a good point here.
Well, I think restoring the original opening, and again, I think you'll find that when you start pulling materials off uh, in, inside and outside, you will find the original frame there. Mm -hmm. And again, what, what is it that you can put there that you can open that will create what, what at what point in history was there? And that's why it would, it's too bad we don't have a picture from way back of, of what it looked like. So it would make it easier to. Yeah, maybe. To My archives only go back to 76. <laughs> it could have been that, you know, that whole, the building had a center door with two windows on either side, kind of like what's up above on the second floor. Oh boy, it's hard to say. But it's you, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Based on what I see at work, I don't think it's changed in a very, very long time. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I also, I know when it was the TJ Hubbard Saloon, there was still something next to it. I don't think the whole building was, and that was 1861. I only know that uh -huh. we, have a, we have a fire map that when the, the marketplace burned back there, that that's the oldest record that we have of the place. Uh-huh. Um, Oh, that's interesting. You have all that history. It's great. Oh, yeah. You should come and check out all the history. There's a lot <laughs> there. Yeah. No, I'm not saying you have to bring it back to what it was, you know, when it was first built, but it's just interesting to find out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was a bar before it was Charlie's. I think it was a place called the Woodshed. There was the Woodshed, the Pines. There was a doctor's office for a very brief amount of time. Before that, it was the TJ Hubbard Saloon. There might have been something <laughs> between 1861 and when it became the Pines. Um, but yeah, that's all I know. You don't have any pictures of the saloon, I assume. No, all I have is the fire map from 1861. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Some of the old city directories might have pictures of I know, it. No, you're making me want to yeah. go to the historical society and see what they have. <laughs> Who knew we were so important? <laughs> so we have a consensus that uh, restoring the uh, the larger opening seems fine, and it seems to blend in with the rest of the streetscape. The question is, what what is uh, acceptable for filling that space? Whether it's double hungs or garage doors or or French doors or whatever the possibility may be. May I say something? Sure. Please. I think that it's a misnomer to call these garage doors since nothing's going to drive in there because there's a definite no. two well, like a foot let's, sill. Let's call it an overhead door. Yes, an overhead door. Uh, overhead uh, no door. overhead window. I think. Yes. <laughs> you know because there's no door about it. I don't want people walking in and out of it. Nope. I don't think that that's going to be its purpose. I think that what it is is a window that opens in a way that is possible for our tiny old building, you know, in a way that works. Well, it's interesting that the, the, the first floor openings don't line up with the second floor openings at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I suspect it's been that way for a long time. Uh, so Ben, did I hear you say that you would vote for it, even though you wish it still had the center million or some other ones, you would still vote for it. And I so would. would Eric. Yes. And it sounded to me like Liz and Martha were both no's on the current application. So I think it would be up to you, Steve. Would you want to give them the option to put the center million back or? I would give them that option. That would be my, yes. But would you, Eric? I'm thinking. <laughs> nope, I, I just asked. The, uh, I don't think it makes much difference. So, uh, as long as, you know, the, the idea with this new thing is to have the dividers all disappear. Uh, and so whether it's there or not doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, make much difference to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue to vote no, but I think actually, um, you know, I'm certainly happy that the, the big opening will be restored and, um, you know, it's not, I'm not terribly upset by it, but I just don't, you know, 
I think there might be a better option in my opinion. What's gonna, I'm trying to imagine them open and I'm imagining there's still like a bar that people sit at. Yes. And so like you'll be, when it's fully open, there, as far as like your view will be into like people's feet and ankles and. I don't believe we're gonna have people sitting in the space. I think it's just going to be a window because you've been in there. The trap yeah. door to the basement is right in front of the largest window. Yeah. And then in front of the other window is the ATM machine and the pool table. Yeah. So even though we have seating there now, I don't believe that that's going to be an option. And I, I know that working with the DLC, with, like I have been, I'm pretty sure Pat's going to not want people sitting on Main Street drinking. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's a little. Uh. So I think they're really just going to be open air windows. Right. You know, that was kind of people mine. can see in and you might be able to say hi to somebody on the sidewalk from the bar. But, you know, nine times out of 10 in the daytime, we'll probably have one of them closed and just have the other one open for the pool tables. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really for ventilation more than anything else. And then what prevents me from using it like a door? The door person. Because the way that we schedule folks is that at night when we'd have both of them open because it's busy, um, we would have a door person in the middle making sure people aren't using it as a door. We also have velvet ropes that we use from time to time for crowd control. Um, and then during the day, the one that we would have open would probably be the one where the bartender is standing there and seeing everything. So it'd be the one next to the bar, you yeah. know, unless the patrons were like, I don't want someone seeing me drink at 2.30 in the afternoon on Main Street. So would you mind closing the door? To which case I would say, sure, and open the other one. Um, yeah. But I think that we're, we're very good at what we do. Yeah, I know um, that. As far as like keeping people safe. So, um, and again, our first goal is to get approved and then I'll go to the DLC and look for best practices. Yep. which is kind of what I do with everything that we do that's different and new because they know more than I do about sure. what works. Yep. So. And the one other thing to consider is that with those doors open, you might have a code issue or a railing to keep people from falling out in yeah. case somebody lost their balance and went out and fell out into Absolutely. the sidewalk. Yep. So you have to maintain at least if not 36, at least a 42 inch rail sure. to prevent prevent that from happening. Right, and, and I'm, or, I'm sure as we're building, the, the people that are contracting us are gonna know those rules, you know, and we'll and, be in compliance. And you can contact Chris Lumbra. Oh yeah, I love Chris, awesome. Yeah, we'll talk to Chris. All those are outside of our purview, but I was curious. Right, right, no, but those are all good points. And as far as safety is concerned, that's my thing. So I'll be on that because, you know, I like my people and I want them to, not get hurt so they yep. can come back you know yep. that might also give you some options if you are required to have that bottom if you need a rail there you, you could even consider having the bottom panel fixed yep. and then three panels that raise up if you need if there's a height issue mm -hmm. and especially i know it's a bar but I'm not sure if anybody's allowed to bring kids in, but if the kids come in, you may have to have a some kind of protection to keep them from crawling out, even if you had a rail. So the again, the visual is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, um, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And again, and again like, those, safety it, first. I know that out. sounds ludicrous, but there are things to consider, and Chris Lumber could mm -hmm. give you some ideas about how to deal with that. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm happy to work with them. I haven't seen them here. Again, the trick to this, maintaining the original opening mm -hmm. and yet having something that opens is to try to minimize the impact. And I think a black color, maybe on a satin finish, would soften it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, it sounds like the consensus is they you could do the full with glass or with a divider in the middle. That's my opinion. Does that is you find that acceptable? Yeah, just barely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just uh, I understand the ventilation issue. Uh, I I tend to think some of that stuff is going to go away. Oh, I hope you're right. 
shortly, <laughs> uh, not shortly, but it, over time. And I know this is a significant investment, so. Well, I think that um, one thing I've noticed is that people really like <coughs> the new culture of outside and having open air. And I think it's, been, it's done a lot for um, people coming to visit. They love it. They think it's really cool that we have this inside outside town now. And I, I, I hope that we could kind of jump on that bandwagon, you know? Are, are you gonna open up the place around the corner? Yeah, we have a permit every year now. Um, we're hoping to make that better looking every year too. That's a story for another day, though. <laughs> yeah, permit every day, as in for the the liquor. Yes, license. the liquor permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, we'll keep... talk to you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so you're okay with the full, either the full width or the divider? Yeah, either one. It's, uh, I'm right on the edge, but I think restoring the opening is important. I think the fact that it's reversible. Yes, is important. Because uh, once you frame the opening, you could have a this overhead door slash window, or you could put in a slider, or a double hung, a four, or any other a option. Panel window. Yeah. Uh, Liz or Martha, are either of you on board with that, or are you still object to the uh, <laughs> well configure, just, configuration, just, <laughs> even though you might be willing to, you know, be okay with the is restoring the original opening? Yeah, I'll 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 go with it. I mean, it's it's um, you know, I think there's a lot of good things that are happening with with this project. So. Um, and I like what Eric said about it being reversible. It's, um, you know, it leaves room for other options at some point. So, yeah, I'll go with it. Okay. And, and I guess I'm going to be your holdout, Steve. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Again, wait, you, sort of look, you sort of look back and the original opening was larger, then they made it smaller, and now it's being larger again with a, a little different configuration of, of the the glass and frame. Okay, based on that, <laughs> I'll go through the criteria. E exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district, in this case, the buildings on either side. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a, an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced where possible, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement New features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatment that causes damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, shall be not be approved. In this particular case, restoring an existing opening with a different configuration of glass and muttons. In this particular case, we'll call it acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with amassing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Proportion. Compatibility of relationship between width and height or facades, as well as relationship of width and height of windows and doors. Again, it's being restored to the original opening, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alteration of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Again, in this particular case, that's acceptable. 
architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim sash molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be, must be compatible with historic building style, materials, and architectural features. Again, we're restoring, it's being restored to the original opening with a different configuration of muttons and glass. The recommendations, the applicant has the option of full width glass in the four panel overhead window slash door or with center divider. The, again, the application is for the uh, insulated frame and glass and I would say the smallest with mutton possible is preferred. And then we'll say the applicant has the option of the finish of the black color. Again, to to soften the effect of the change. I.e. gloss or satin finish. Was there anything else to add? I think so. And again, the safety issue inside, you'll just have to deal with based on, you know, code requirements. Absolutely. Happy to do so. Without any, anything else to add, do I hear all in favor, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. Yes. Martha, you're still a no? I'm still a no. Okay, so four to one in favor. Do you have a pen? Get one. I, well, I've also, I've got spares. Okay, great. So I'm gonna give you that. Thank um, you. Steve will give you that and you can sign it. Awesome. And then I will be able to- Just right there below my name. Okay, thank you. I'll take that, I'll give it to Audra tomorrow. Thank you very, very much. You. Okay, thank you. Good luck with your project. Thank you so much, really. Take care, folks. It's a tough one. <laughs> Has anybody had a chance to look at the minutes of October the 18th? 
Yes, and I will move them as a pro to approve them. And this is Martha, I'll second it. All in favor of the minutes of October the 18th, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Yes. And Steve. So minutes are approved. Does anyone have anything else to add? I, I would just uh, say I got some information on the chimneys I talked about in Grafton for Tim Haney. Uh huh. And I haven't looked through it closely, and I need to check with the person. I'll just give it to Tim if I, if uh, but it's it's not going to be the cheapest thing in the world. I I can tell that because if you're going to do that, you have to do it right, and you really have to replicate the mortar joints, the brick size. Yep. And all of it has apparently there's a company in Maine that does this stuff all the time. So. Oh, good. That's awesome. Good. That goes before the development review board tonight. I talked to Tim today just briefly, so I guess he could present that to the board if he wants. So I didn't send it to him because it's somebody else's files. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Anybody else have anything to add? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. All second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Yes. Ben. And Steve, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>